What is the Philosopher's Stone? Now, I have been doing a series of videos on alchemy and the seven stages of transformation, so you can go and check those out if you haven't watched them yet. Now, this video is all about the final stage, which brings us to the Philosopher's Stone. And this stage of alchemy is called coagulation. So to coagulate means to crystallize, to bring something into its final solid crystallized form where we have gone through all this transformation through this journey of alchemy and we have refined and we've elevated and we've purified and we've healed and we've come to a place where we are perfecting and mastering ourselves. And that is that coagulation stage is where everything finally just really gels, it really crystallizes within us so that we become uh, really more self-realized, more self-mastered, and we can then serve in the world from that place of greater mastery. Now, this stage has often been compared to uh, the phoenix rising out of its ashes. You know, sometimes a phoenix goes through this process of uh, building its nest, and then because it's a bird of fire, it it combusts its nests and then it burns to ash and then at some point it rises again. So this ancient symbol of the phoenix, as it rises up into its full glory and beauty and brings its magic into the world, that is that stage of coagulation. Um, also the Philosopher's Stone, you know, there's often these, these ancient lore uh, in alchemy about the, this Philosopher's Stone that's supposed to, anything that it touches, it turns it into perfection turns it into gold. Uh, and this is, of course, all a metaphorical language for taking something from its raw, natural state and, and bringing it into a perfected state where it has no more corruptibility, no more impurities. It's, it's of its purest, ref, most refined form that it can be. So what is the Philosopher's Stone? Well, when we have transformed successfully through all seven stages of alchemy, our soul that has been touched by that alchemy, that has been purified and elevated and refined by that alchemy, we become the Philosopher's Stone. And one way of looking at that is that, you know, do you remember the old story of Midas and having that Midas touch where King Midas, you know, could go and whatever he touched, it turned to gold? Well, at first it was really a good thing because he would touch it and, you know, wealth and, and you know, perfection and this gold and this beauty could come. Now he had to use this skill wisely, and that is where the moral of, of that particular story comes in, is don't get greedy. <laughs> um, but with alchemy, being that philosopher's stone, really coming to that perfection of the self, that achievement of your full potential, that greatest you that you can be, it's like you then start to have the Midas touch, where whatever it is that you apply yourself to in the world, whatever project you're gonna do, whatever um, you set your will towards, you are gonna be able to have that Midas touch. You're gonna be able to turn it into a work of art, a, a perfect, perfect you know, execution of whatever that original idea was. It'll come through and it'll be manifested in perfect form according to its original idea. You know, sometimes when we, when we have these ideas, that when we go through that creative process, our final result doesn't always match what we originally had a vision or an inspiration for. Uh, but when you become the Philosopher's Stone, when you've really uh, achieved that perfection of the self, then there will be no obstruction. There will be from initial idea and spark to final result where it matches perfectly. Um, but ultimately, it's, it is, yes, it's about what we can create and manifest in the world, but really it's about us from within. Uh, really coming into a whole state of being within yourself where you feel 100% you, unapologetically you, um, and that you, you hold a, a presence and energy about you that really supports, um, that really elevates the field around you. So when other people come in around you, not only do you have the Midas touch in your own life and the things that you can create and manifest in your world, but it's really more about you inside. Like you feel so incongruent with yourself. You are so wholly and completely you, your true self. Um, and you will have access to a lot of, a lot of knowledge, self-knowledge, a lot of strength within you, a lot of power, um, and this ability to flow energy that 
not only elevates your own life and helps you live in a greater state of joy and peace and balance and happiness and love, um, but you'll also be able to put out this field where others who come into your field will, will feel elevated from just being in your presence. Um, they're going to feel benefit. They're going to feel drawn to you because you have such an amplified field as a result of your own work and your own transformation of yourself. Now, again, I mentioned in the previous video that that process of initiation is really important because that accelerates this process. Um, and it gives us the ancient mystery school traditions really give us a system of guidance for how to keep moving through all of these stages, how to speed that process up, how to work with it. Um, and it really is honestly cycles of transformation. It's not like you just do this cycle once and then you're forever more enlightened. Um, it's almost like when you reach enlightenment, you realize there's so many more mountains to climb. Uh, and the best thing to do is to remain humble and always continue to seek that next level of growth, that next uh, mountain to climb, or uh, how we can continue to improve in new areas and go through the alchemical process in a new area of life. So we're always doing cycles and cycles and cycles of this alchemical process. And that is natural flow. It is nature of the universe is to continue that evolutionary process, to continue through those cycles of change and building and becoming even greater. Uh, so when we understand alchemy, we understand the formula, the stages, we can assess where we're at in that alchemical process and where we need to be, right, to get to the next stage. What do we need to do to continue this process forward? And it's always happening, but rather than getting stuck somewhere in the middle and backsliding and having to repeat cycles again, when we can consciously participate with it, we can keep it moving forward through all seven stages and then really crystallize that area of our life, which is that coagulation stage. And then we can move on to another area where we want to grow and expand and develop. And as you do, then you, you start building this um, almost like your own temple of your life. It becomes a very amazing sacred process um, that's a, quite the adventure. It brings a lot of excitement to life and you'll never look back and you'll, you will never want to go back and do it the other way. <laughs> um, you just keep looking forward to what's next. Uh, so I hope that you have enjoyed this alchemical series and there's a lot more to explore and to check out with the alchemy, how it applies to our own lives, how it applies to our world, to our society, because we as a collective are going through an evolutionary process as well. And these are things that I talk about in my book, The Game Changers, Social Alchemists in the 21st Century. Uh, and I have a special new edition, second edition of it that brings us up to 2021. So go check it out. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe the channel and to the newsletter and uh, go and get your copy of the Game Changers if you haven't already. Thanks for joining.